So, Mohammed, we've talked about how to have a baby. Um, perhaps we can talk in more detail about why it doesn't happen. Um, despite doing everything necessary for some couples, it's, falling pregnant is just so elusive to them. Uh, what are the main reasons um, why it doesn't happen? And what do you do to help? Well, the main reasons could be either related to the female or to the male, and they're probably equally responsible. So 25% of the cases are to do with a problem with the woman herself, like if she doesn't ovulate regularly, if she's got blocked tubes, uh, endometriosis, polycystic ovaries, there are a variety of, of problems that can sometimes affect the chances of the woman being able to, to conceive without help and without assistance. Another 25% will be to do with the husband, so if or the partner. If he's not producing enough sperm or if the quality of the sperm is not very good, fertilization is not going to happen because you need uh, certain criteria in the sperm to allow the sperm to fertilize the egg and create an embryo. Uh, and this is something that can be helped uh, with IVF or not exactly IVF, it's a variant of IVF called Dixie, where you have to select sperm and inject them into the eggs. Uh, another 25% could be a combined reasons, uh, male and female together. And the most elusive uh, reason for, for difficulty in conceiving is what we call unexplained infertility. And this could account nowadays for about 20-25% of the cases, meaning that uh, the couple will tick all the boxes, all the tests are normal, but they don't get pregnant, or if there is a pregnancy, it doesn't continue nine months and they have miscarriages and so on. And this is a very gray area in medicine, and there are lots of theories and lots of methods to try and approach that. Uh, IVF on its own is not exactly the answer for those people, because those people, in principle, they don't have any problem in producing embryos. They produce embryos, and it's actually what happens next when the embryos go back into the body. So unless you try and uh, identify the problem, which is an implantation problem, and try and tackle this problem, then by just creating more embryos by IVF and putting them back, you're not actually doing anything different from what the patient is capable of doing herself. How do you start to recognize that 25%? Presumably you have to rule out the other 75% exactly. to exactly. start with. Exactly. So it's a long process. It's a long process and that's why it's very important to have a, a clear diagnosis from the outset because you can focus and, and, and use the right path for the patient. And, and also you need to be realistic and, and you need to explain to the patient what is possible and what is not possible because despite all the tests and despite all the treatment, there is still uh, a high percentage of patients who do not achieve success. Uh, and obviously the success is also dependent on other factors. It's not just the reason or the cause. Age is a very important factor because the chances of success is much higher for people who are, say, let's say, below 35. And as they grow older, the chances decline, and if they hit 40, there is a nosedive for the success rate. So it is important for people to understand that. And I think nowadays we see also a big increase in people coming to, to try and freeze eggs and stuff like that because they recognize the age factor, and they would like to keep something in storage which is going to be like a fallback situation if, if they cannot really get into a relationship before they are late 30s or 40s or something like that. So the 25%, um, the, the, the final 25% that you were talking about there, they are a group that potentially will, will never fall pregnant? No, they will, because you, you, as long as you understand that the problem is, 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 is not actually egg quality or stimulation or sperm or whatever, it's actually what happens next when you create an embryo. And this embryo can be created by trying naturally. If the woman is ovulating and she's trying at the right time of her period, she will have an embryo in her body that will go back into the uterus naturally, but it's not going to implant. So we need to understand that the primary problem for most of those patients, particularly the young ones, is actually what happened to an embryo and why the embryo does implant or does not implant. And nobody has been able to know exactly what the mechanism is. There are a lot of theories, there are a lot of approach for that. I mean, we've been looking into this ourselves for I'd say since 2002, and we have tried to maybe add a lot of different treatments to maximize the chances of implantation. And we've been successful to, to a large degree, but there are still a percentage of patients that despite all your, your efforts, I mean, they don't fall pregnant. But the, the only reason for people not getting pregnant is either the embryo is abnormal or 
the body is not receptive to the embryo. There is no third reason. It's either one or the other. You can assess the quality of the embryo by doing the treatment, see exactly how the embryo is going to develop in the lab. So you've got a fair idea about that. What happens in the body is, is not really as clear. And, and this is where the confusion arises, and this is where people try different methods of, of treatment. Thank you.